Hello again from AM Builds. Another in our series of making the most of a small shop. We are developing our space of 5 metres by 3.5 metres with a usable height of 3 metres. Today's video is about trying to keep the ambient air clean in the shop, mainly for our own benefit of course, but also because the shop shares a space with two cars stacked in the front garage and there's only a single door separating the shop from a new family room which I'm working on. Initially I looked at the smaller workshop air filters like this one but two things stopped me. The main one not being having much space to mount one near the ceiling and the second one was the high cost of the filters relative to their size. Here's my idea to utilise a somewhat dead space above the mitre saw to incorporate a filter taking economical standard 600 by 600 air conditioning filters and this is what it looks like. Our starting point with our unit layout and from the foreground there's a router section, a mitre station, a sander space, a drawer unit, the shop vac space and a cupboard for the pillar drill. The fan units are sold for home and gym use as air movers, self-contained and I thought they would be a reliable solution and fit for purpose. Details are included in the description. Each fan has three speeds, 10, 12 and 15 cubic metres per minute. In the end I had plenty room for two fans, using speed 2 to lower the albeit reasonable fan noise and hopefully increase the service life, I am shifting up to 24 cubic metres a minute. My shop is about 52.5 cubic metres and even with the garage 105 cubic metres so the arrangement is well up to the job. I'm likely to add flaps to the outflow so I can use the blown up angle of the flap to tell me if the filter needs attention and also to prevent air entering so I can use one fan at a time if I want to. The build started using a piece of 18mm OSB as a backboard. The eagle-eyed of you will notice our first mistake, not allowing enough width in the saw area for the full range of angles well beyond 45 degrees in the 12-inch Bosch. We had 800mm increasing it to 900mm which is a minimum size for the saw but we couldn't add any more because the leftmost unit was now very close to the door. The two sides are ready to fit. The wedge-shaped bracket for the floor for the filter box was an idea to force the outlet air from the vacuum through this space to assist in clearing the dust from the saw. But the effect is quite weak. I might tinker with it in the future and if this is a benefit augment the video to discuss it. The two sides are fitted and the loose piece is the horizontal support for the fans cut away to ensure unrestricted airflow. This piece is the bottom of the filter box. Here is the frame for the air conditioning filters showing their relative size. I use some leftover wood and water resistant MDF for this with the filters which are simply a push fit into the frame. I wanted to make checking and blowing out the air filters as easy as possible and so used a couple of blocks at the bottom so only two screws were needed on the grill to hold it in place and create a functional seal. I'll likely replace the screws with knobs and bolts in due course. Here's the grill and again side on to show the structure designed to make fitting quick and maintain rigidity for the air seal. Here is the grill and the top dry fitted to check everything works before sealing the top to the sides. I lined the back of the saw area with white plastic and made two angled sections of 12mm ply to conceal the vacuum lines. Here's the wiring board temporarily fixed pending making a French cleat wall for this section, top row left to right, firstly the master switch for both fans, then adjustable touch switches for the fans set to one touch for an hour but can touch again to turn off immediately. An accessible switch for the shop vac socket below the shelf. Then the NVR which will disable the fans, the saw, the vacuum, the router section and the plane socket as all share the vacuum hookup. On the bottom row, the plane socket on the right is there for the sander or other tools that call for power from the vacuum and then the other two USB sockets are permanently live on the shop ring for non-vacuum activity. Here is the view under the shelf. The left and right vacuum lines were joined to the cyclone with enough slack to make emptying the waste easy. 
Here is the underbench wiring. The single socket is switched from the wiring board to give power to the VAC. The switched output from the VAC goes to this four-way. The vacant socket is for the router spacer once I get that up and running. The clear corrugated vacuum hose is for the saw and the sander. And the black hose from the VAC outlet going up into the saw box is still a work in progress. Here is a custom sawdust bin my son Malcolm made to fit the space. It's 500 millimeters wide, 300 deep and 600 tall. It takes a standard bin bag as a tight fit without needing anything to retain it. He made a tight fitting lid and the orange plastic cyclone simply sits on top without needing to be fixed. I chose the Trend T35 vacuum for the following reasons. It has M-class filtration. It is able to switch 2200 watts. My router and saw are both 2000 watts so I needed this extra switching capacity over the more usual 14 to 1600 watt switching. I was able to connect a hose to the outflow which I have directed to the saw space to encourage dust extraction, still a work in progress. It runs an automatic cleaning cycle by rating the filter to keep it from becoming choked. It's of modest cost, I paid just over £200, and the link for it is in the description. Finally, I added a small pull-out drawer for offcuts, which we either reuse or recycle, and there was enough room to add a second rectangular bin for general waste. Back above the bench now, here's the filter box wired for the fans. The incoming power comes from the high-level wall trunking, and the light green wire is for the boom to serve a new workbench. The vacuum line up the left side is for the boom and is also teed off at bench level for the router space. The fans are installed and held in place with the timber blocks and the filter frame is then fitted. The secondary filter label and fitted. The primary filter label and fitted. The top is fitted. The lower cowl is fitted the left vacuum line is concealed in the saw area and the right vacuum line for the saw and sander as yet unconcealed with the blast gates for the saw and bench space visible. All set up, vacuum lines concealed both sides now. I fitted a camera boom so that I can provide an overhead vacuum line and power line for my bench when I get it made. Some of the French cleat wall now installed on the left. I chose a Manfrotto 098B boom and the URL is in the description. I've been pleased with the filtration. The noise is perfectly acceptable from the fans as a background, but I would always encourage ear defenders for the saw and vacuum noise and especially the vac filter clean cycle. I hope you found something of interest here, and using the space above the mitre saw means the idea could work in many small shops where a big box filter could be awkward. Once again, thank you to my son Malcolm for the production of the video. If you like what you see, please like the video, subscribe, and see what else we have posted. We have more on the camera, and we'll be back with you soon. Goodbye.